our third unit will deal with a very important mathematical concept which is functions and I'm sure that this unit will be fun. Let's start by a definition. A function is a well-defined relationship between the elements of two sets such that each element of the first set which we call the domain has one image one particular connection only in the second set which we call the range so basically a function is some kind of a relationship if we look at this kind of relationship where we have here the elements of the first set which is states in the Levant and the second set is the capitals as you notice here the, this is what we call the domain the first set this is what we call the range which is the second set and in this case we have a relationship between each state and its capital this is called a mapping so Jordan maps to Amman Palestine maps to Jerusalem Syria maps to Damascus and Lebanon maps to Beirut another way of saying that would be that Amman is the image of Jordan Jerusalem is the image of Palestine whether you, you use the first uh, expression or the second the idea is that there is a special relationship between this element in the in the domain and this element in the range we can also have another kind of relationship let's say that the domain in this case is the list of new students to the school and the range is the set of classes to which those students were assigned it is absolutely possible to assign two different students like Nael and Lamise to grade 10a and you can assign two other students for example Ghassan and Rand to 10b now this is a function because Nael has one particular image in the range so Nael will go to 10a Lamise will also go to 10a it doesn't matter that there are two people going to 10a as long as this particular person is going to 10a and this particular person is going to 10a so there's no confusion for Nael no confusion for Lamise the same applies when we look at the states this element Jordan has one image only a state cannot have two capitals Palestine maps to Jerusalem only so this is a function because each element in this set maps to one element only in this set so this is a function and in exactly the same way for the same reasons this is a function each element here maps to exactly one element here and it doesn't matter if if two elements here map to the same element here now if you look at this case now this is a an absurd situation you cannot assign Lamise to two different classes so this particular element has one image in the set but this element has two images in this set and this is the reason why this is not a function it is merely a relation we can also think of algebraic or mathematical functions in this case the domain is the set of four numbers 4 1 negative 1 and negative 3 and the range is 8 to negative 2 and negative 6 and obviously the relation that maps 4 to 8 is now a mathematical one previously it was the relation of which is the capital or which is the class but in this case we are mapping 4 
2 2 times 4 1 to 2 times 1 negative 1 to negative 2 so we're mapping each number with its double now this is a mathematical relationship and it is a function as well let's see what we can do to represent it if we consider this to be a very basic sketch of the same mapping diagram here we have a mapping diagram with a complete set but now let's abstract it and make it simpler now let's take the domain and let's play around let's move it like this until it becomes horizontal and then let's move it across to here now as you can see the mappings are still there and in order to keep track of the elements this was the 4 this was the 1 this was the negative 1 and this was negative 3 so what we have ended up with is basically the Cartesian plane where this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis now 4 maps to 8 1 maps to 2 negative 1 maps to negative 2 and negative 3 maps to negative 6 but we know from our knowledge of uh, the Cartesian plane that we don't really need all those straight lines all we need is just a point at the corner here and another one here and another one here and here this tells me that 4 is the x coordinate and 8 is the x coordinate and because the grid is at right angles i really don't need those anymore so i can delete them and what i only have is the set of points that were at the corners and i can obviously see that this was 4 8 this was 1 2 this was negative 1 negative 2 negative 3 negative 6 and if you want you can actually connect them with a straight line and end up with a graph So we have just discovered that the mapping diagram is a very primitive form of the Cartesian plane and we can represent the relationships on the mapping diagram by a graph. So the first set is the x-axis and the second set is the y-axis. This is what you use to call the domain and this is what we use to call the range. So, with this in mind, I'm sure that science comes to mind. Let's consider the following. This statement, your achievement is a function of the effort you put in, or the extension of a spring is a function of the force applied to it. In this context, the word function implies depends on. Your achievement depends on 
the effort you put in. The extension of the spring is a um, is determined by the force applied to it. So, in science, when we say that y is a function of x, that means that y depends on x, or more precisely, that the value of y is determined by the value of x, in much the same way as the value of the extension of the spring is determined by the magnitude of the force applied to it. And again, in science, we know that y is the dependent variable and x is the independent variable. You've seen that in graphs in science, but in this case, we're also seeing that in a function, the first set, which is a domain, is the independent variable, and y, which is the range, it is the dependent variable. So, now that we have achieved that this is the domain, and this is the range, let's see how we can determine the domain and range of a function that is presented graphically. And the way to do this is probably best done by the use of this tool. So let's keep in mind, let's begin by trying to determine the domain. The domain is the set of values of x that exist where there is a graph. So we scan, we take a vertical line and we scan, we are moving along the x-axis. And the first moment we touch the graph is at negative 4, but negative 4 is not included. There is a graph here. There is a graph here, and here, and here, and this is the last point, and beyond that, there is no graph. So, it is obvious that the domain is such that x ranges between negative 4 and 4. Negative 4 is not included, so negative 4 is less than x, which is less than or equal to 4. Now let's see what the range is. For the range, we have to, sc to scan the y values from the bottom up. So here there is no graph, and the first value that we meet is this, which is, let's say, negative 6. There is a graph here, and it extends right up to here, which is, say, 18, but it's not included. So the range, in this case, is such that negative 6 is less than or equal to, because this point is included, is less than or equal to y, because y is the range, and it's less than eighteen. So you see we're using inequalities to represent the domain and range. You can also express them using sets or using interval notation. Let's try another case. We want to determine the domain and range. Beginning with the domain, we scan along the x. The first value we meet is negative 4, that's not included, and we end at 3, which is also not included. So our domain is such that negative 4 is less than x, which is less than 3. For the range, we scan up, and the first point that we meet is here, when the y, the y value is, say, negative 6. There is a graph here, 
and even though one end of the graph stops we still continue until the very end which is 10 that's not included now here the first value of y that we met is a point on the on the curve so it is included so our range is such that negative 6 is less than or equal to y which is less than 10 and another example let's scan the axis first value at negative 7 not included last value at 5 included so the domain is such that negative 7 is less than x which is less than or equal to 5 and if we scan the y values this is the first y that we meet which is say negative 22 we scan up until the graph ends say 12 and they are both included so the range is such that negative 22 is less than or equal to y which is less than or equal to 12 considering that this is the first point we met and that this is the last point that we met let's remove these we don't need them anymore now to sum up a function is a special type of relation and in mathematics it's a mathematical relation it's used to express the relationship between an independent and a dependent variable the independent variable x which is called the domain can be discovered by scanning from left to right the dependent variable which is y which is also called the range can be determined by scanning from the bottom up for a relation to be a function, a value of x must map to only one value of y. And finally, representing functions, well, we have seen mapping diagrams, we have seen graphs, we will later consider how we can express functions using algebraic notation and using block diagrams. However, the most important are those two and those will be what we'll concentrate on in the rest of this unit.